and your hair and your lips and you wonder to yourself why couldn't I have come into the world white why did I have to be black next Sunday the white people are going to talk about the real look of Jesus. Not that they didn't know how he looked, but they didn't want you to know how he looked. So next week, they're going to show him with an olive color. And look like he got a little, you know, a little uh, dreadlock or something. <laughs> now, when you see that picture, you may say, oh, man, that ain't my Jesus. White folk will be saying the same thing. Don't come to me with that. Because that means the niggers that I've been persecuting look like the man that I've been telling them that is the greatest human being that ever lived, and now the greatest human being is a nigga. Well, now, that, 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 that kind of messes things up. So they're going to approach the subject real funny. Maybe next week, which is Easter Sunday, you might want to rise from your grave and uh, look at yourself in a better light than the way you see yourself right now. In fact, we're not going to wait till next Sunday. We're going to do that right now. Now, the Bible says, in the beginning, it don't tell you when that beginning was. But it's letting you know there was a beginning. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. The earth was without form and void. Darkness was upon the face of the deep. So darkness preceded light. Now let's take a look into this darkness here. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad said, that the darkness that we see now is not real. When the night comes, you're in the dark. But it's not real darkness. How do you know? Because the minute the light comes, the darkness goes. Where did it go? It vanished. Why? Because it wasn't real in the beginning. The thing that is real is what produced the darkness. Now, you go out there today, the sun is shining. I hope to let you out in time while the sun is still shining. But if you go out and stand and let the sun strike you, When the sun strikes you, if you are facing east, if you face the east, the sun striking your body will send a shadow toward the west. So when you look at the shadow, you see this dark thing following you. But that which is following you is not real. What is real is you. What is real is the sun. And as the sun strikes you and you block that sun, you produce what is called darkness or shadow. So the earth, when one side is in the light of the sun, the other side is in the shadow of the earth. And when you're in the shadow of the earth, you call that night but the darkness is not real. It's produced by the motion of the earth 
in relationship to the sun. But what kind of darkness was that when there was no sun, there was no moon, there was no stars? That's the darkness that is beyond the diameter of sunlight at the wall of the universe where light does not go beyond it there is darkness but that darkness is not a shadow that darkness is real so when they talk about a black hole they're not talking about some unreal shadow they're talking about real darkness. Real darkness contains a power. Ah. There's a power out there that is always bringing new objects into view. Stars are dying, stars are being born, and that power that is out there is bringing new objects out of darkness that is real into light. The darkness of the womb, that's not a shadow, baby. That's real darkness. The Holy Quran calls it triple darkness. It's layers of darkness, but in that darkness is the power to create light. In that darkness, there's the germ of light. That's why any believer in God, no matter how dark the day seems, no matter how dark the trouble is that you think you're in, yet in that darkness, there's light and there's life if you hold on and don't let the darkness overtake you till your mind becomes as dark as the darkness that envelops you. The power of darkness is that it can create you after itself. I'm going to say it again. Sometimes we get in a bad spirit. We may call it, liken it to darkness. A gloom comes over the mind because of a thought that we are thinking, real or imagined. And then that thought begins to reflect itself in our skin. It begins to reflect itself in our posture. Shoulders begin to droop. You don't feel good. Hey, what's the matter? I don't feel good. What happened to you? A thought that's in my brain that is remaking me according to the darkness of that thought. So now I've become as dark and as gloomy as what is in my mind. So it is with the real darkness that was in existence before there was light. Honorable Elijah Muhammad said to us that an atom sparkled in the darkness. And God began to create himself. He said, out of the material of the darkness. 
So what he's telling us is that matter was there. But the matter was doing nothing. It had no form. It had no aim. It had no purpose until an atom sparkled in the darkness. Look at you. He said you are created in his image and after his likeness. How did you start from a tiny life germ that with the naked eye, the one that impregnated the egg, you can't see it with your eye. That's how infinitesimally small that sperm was. That's how infinitesimally small the egg was. But that sperm with a little tail and a head had some intelligence in it because it knew where it wanted to go and it knew what it wanted to do in the dark. In the dark, that sperm found the egg and the first cell of life began in darkness. <laughs> but the cell had a light of itself, electricity inside the cell, a neutron, a proton, and an electron. The cell of life was like an atom. <laughs> listen, listen. The light of itself caused it to start rotating around the light of itself. And it began breaking down and building up. We don't know how long it took for brains to form in the darkness. <laughs> but the first thing that forms when a baby is conceived in the womb is not the tail. The first thing that forms is what? And it is the head that calls the arms into existence, the feet into existence, the organs into existence come from the head. Well, when you didn't even have thought, before you could think, there was an intelligence working in you that is the light of God, the power of God, even before the growth of intelligence in the darkness. We were being fashioned out of a tiny life germ, sperm mixed with ovum. And we were called into existence by what was in that tiny sperm, the head of it. And at the end of nine months, we came forth knowing nothing but with a capacity to learn everything. So when the Holy Quran in Surah 112 says, he neither beget nor is he begotten. The first God was the originator of himself. He was not begotten. And the one that comes 
in the end does not beget. He don't need a son from his loins. He produces a nation from the wisdom of his mouth. I want you to think with me. Now, beloved, he fashioned himself out of darkness. So we learn how environment can influence heredity. So we have to be careful what environment we put ourselves in because no matter what is in you of good, if you're in the wrong environment, that environment can affect the good that is in you and turn you into itself. Are you all right? Now, I want to go to the board a minute. Yeah, that's my, my work today, Chief. I want to share revelation with you so that we can reason together on who this man, Master Farad Muhammad was, that came among us and taught the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. See, if that man ain't what we say he is, then Elijah Muhammad can't be who we say he is. Then we are not who we think we are, and we can take that which Master Farad Muhammad taught and throw it all away, throw the teaching of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad away, like some of you did. Oh, pardon me, like some of us did. But I know the effect of what happened to me. the original man. Are you black because you got cursed? Or are you black because you took your color out of the darkness out of which the first light came? Since we agree that environment influences heredity. If the real darkness before there was sunlight had matter in it that was real, how then could the God make himself up in darkness and come out white? Talk to me. If he made himself up out of darkness and the darkness covered him, then the God who originated the heavens and the earth is a black God. Now, you don't like that because you've been taught to worship white folk. But now we're going to get a lesson today that I want you to think about. And all of you that have knowledge, all of you that have been to college, all of you that have studied, let's study together today. Who is the original man? 
what is the meaning of original? Let me see what my little definition here says. I got to call Mr. Webster. Webby! What do you say original means, Mr. Webster? Belonging or pertaining to the origin, origin or beginning of something arising or proceeding independently of anything else. Since God is self-created, he arises independent of anything else, and that's why El Fatiha says, that's why El Fatiha says, Allah is he of whom nothing is independent but upon whom we all depend. So the first God that originated himself causes us to be dependent on him. That's why he's called Jehovah. He's the self-existent God. And he's the God by whom all things exist or subsist. So without the original man, we would not be here. So there was some begetting done after he created himself. Elijah Muhammad said the first thing he did was study himself. And in himself, he saw another being, another creature. In himself, he saw somebody else. And he brought her into existence from himself. The first act of creation of God is not the sun, not the moon, not the stars. His first act of creation was her. Woman, the second self of God. You're a powerful creature, sister. Wait a minute, wait a minute. You're powerful, but you messed up. Like us. We're powerful too, but we all messed up. But we're going to get it right. Look at this, sister. Have you ever watched a flower unfold. One day, I happened to be looking at it and studying it. And I saw this stem, and the flower was closed, and then I watched it slowly stretch itself. I said, mm, that must have been painful. Now, we don't ever think that plant life can feel. But if it's life, it can feel. Plant is you. Your flesh is the plant life of the earth. Your bone is the stone of the earth. Your blood is the water of the earth. So just as you unfold, huh? you in the womb stretch it. 
Look at the baby when it comes out. It looked like hell because it's in pain. It's been forming, and now it's forcing itself with its little head against your pelvis, driving itself into the world. And when it comes in, it's all wrinkled up. Black and blue. It fought like hell to get here. A lot of pain in Genesis. A lot of pain in birth. A lot of pain to grow from where you are into where God wants us to be. So I can imagine what the original man went through just coming into existence. So when he created something from himself, he created her with a nature to console him. You can't get away from what you are. You might want to be this old hard Hannah. But you're not a woman until you're relating well to a man. I don't give a damn, excuse me, I don't give a care. I'm going to try to behave myself today. I don't care what profession you're in. There is no profession that gives you more joy than when you got a loving relationship with a man that satisfies your mind, your heart, and your longing. When a man does that to you, all you want to do is serve him. How do you serve him, sis? I want to get in some hot water, baby, so I can scrub you down, honey. Look at all them scales on your feet. Let me, let me, let me fix your foot, baby. Now turn the lights down low and light a candle. Let's set the right mood here. You can't help yourself, sister. You made that way. But the hurting thing is when you give yourself to a no good bum that don't know how to treat a woman who is willing to give him everything of herself. And he crushes her. So when he made Adam, he gave Adam a woman, and he said, it ain't right that the man should be alone. He should have companionship. Not Adam and Steve. But Adam and Eve. Now, this original man of any dispensation is referred to under the name Adam. Some of the scholars of Islam say there may be about 50,000 Adams. I wonder where they got that from. But let's entertain the thought. If from our deportation from moon, it is 66, trillion 
year. I'll get into this, but not today. If you divide the history that we make called Bible or Quran, which we make to equal the circumference of our home, the earth is 24,896 miles in circumference, nearly 25,000 miles. So we write history, Bible, or Quran, the revelation to the Honorable Elijah Muhammad said, to equal our home circumference, a year for every mile. So when we write history, we write it to last for 25,000 years. And the first man, of that cycle is the God or the original man of that cycle or the Adam of that cycle. He can't borrow the wisdom of the previous cycle, but he builds on that wisdom with a new wisdom. Are you listening? Now, Time for a portion of that history to be given. He said there are 24 scientists. He called them scientists. These are gods. 23 of them actually do the writing. The 24th one acts as a judge. He said the 23 is in accord with the hours of our day, not quite 24 hours, 23 hours, 56 minutes, 46 seconds, in accord with the way the planet leans, 23 degrees, 30 minutes to the plane of its orbit. So 23 of these scientists go out and make the history. How does the black man write history? We don't write it after we do it. The original man writes history before he does it, then walks into the history that he has written. How do you write history 25,000 years in advance? What kind of mind must you have to write history? Let me get this handkerchief because I'm beginning to perspire a little bit. I'm having a good time. I don't know about you. <laughs> Look at this. If you can see this pen, it's one, right? Multiply it in your mind. Can you see two? Just by looking at one, you can see two. Can you see three? Can you see four? As long as you can see one, you can multiply one and see what is not yet in existence, then bring it. Listen, 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 listen. These men can tune in on our thinking. Now, thought shapes matter. Have you ever seen a homosexual? Wait a minute. No. I'm not trying to be smart. But any time a man wants to be a woman, RuPaul, for instance. Have you heard of RuPaul? He's a very famous man-woman. Now, brother, Ru RuPaul could fool you. <laughs> yeah. 
If you're looking for a pretty, shapely woman, RuPaul could fool you up to a certain time. <laughs> the point I'm making is, as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. Your thoughts can reshape you. So you want to be a woman? You're thinking about being a woman? You love acting like a woman? Then pretty soon, your face will start changing. You get that soft look, that sweet look. But I don't give a damn how soft and sweet you get. You'll never be able to be a woman. You'll never be able to be the second self of God. You'll never be able to give to a man what a real woman could give, and a real woman Never, 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 never. So you can forget it, man. And you can forget it too, sister, they want to play man. And that kind of thing is growing among us, you know. I'm a woman, you say, and I like women. Well, okay. Why you like women? What experience did you have with a man that made you so fed up with a man that now you want to be the thing that you fed up with? <laughs> uh, that don't make sense now. I, I haven't got that. So you're going to start thinking like a man, which you can't do. Nature didn't give it to you. Okay, let's say you, you start trying to think like a man. I'm a man. You go to the gym and build up your muscle. You start getting that funny look in your face like a man. Then you start going after some soft looking sister. That will be your, your woman. Yeah, well, you know, we're all sick. We're all sick because we've been living under Satan. You can't live under Satan and be well. So, what I'm getting at, and I know. <laughs> if you multiply 25 into 66 trillion, you will get the number of atoms that have been in the world since the deportation of moon. Now, let's not go back that far yet. Let's deal with the time that we are in. Because this Bible and this Quran deals with a specific 6,000 year period. I want you to erase that board for me, brother, please. I'll be coming back down. Now, now do you know why you black? Why are you black, brother? Because you are a direct descendant of the originator of the heavens and the earth. You are the people of God. You have so much in you from the originator. All you need is a proper environment. And that environment will bring out of you what is in you from the originator. You are little gods. Not worthy of worship. Only Allah is worthy of worship. But you are little gods. Now to my Muslim family, I want to say this. You might think 
that this is really erroneous teaching because you really don't see how God can operate in a man. And I appoint you again to the Quran and the making of Adam. He's called the vicegerent of God. And the term in Arabic is Khalifa. Khalifa. And that means one who stands in the place of another as a successor. So if man is able, or Adam was able to stand in the place of Allah as a successor, then God had put in Adam whatever Adam needed to stand in his place. Something is wrong with this because the Adam that we are talking about, he didn't bring in a civilization of righteousness. Now let's go to the board again. You all bear with me because I, I don't think I can get over everything that I got here, but I'm going to deal with it. Now, everything in this universe is based on atoms. Atoms. You can break down everything that you see. It breaks down to atoms. Is that right? So the basic, we say, unit of everything in creation is the atom. And you can break the atom down even further, but the atom is the basic unit that everything in this universe is built on, okay? So if we look at the word atom, all um, uh, Semitic languages deal with the phonetic, the, um, the consonant, rather than the vowel. So you have A here and O, you can cancel that out. But the T and the M are important because in language, sometimes the D is interchangeable with the T. So if you have an A here, a D, and you put another vowel A there and an M, you have Adam. When you break down the atom, it is the beginning of everything, and Adam is the genesis of a cycle of history that starts from whatever is in him. Since Adam is the original man of a cycle of history, then whatever comes up in that cycle is found in Adam. Now, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad says, we're in the 16,000th year of our history. We're 10,000 more to go in this cycle. The 24 scientists, 23 of them went out to listen to the thinking of the people, and they said 70% were satisfied with the civilization, 30% were dissatisfied. And whenever you have dis satisfaction, it brings about a change. Now one thing I got to say about Allah, he experiments with things. 
Why does he experiment and allows experiment?